Hey guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and as build up to a big DIY project I have planned for you guys, I am in the process of propagating and planting a bunch of different terrestrial house plants and some of those are various vining types, things like uh, begonia rex vine and some pothos. So in order for them to have something to climb, today I'm going to make um, a DIY moss support thingy bobber. Um, you can buy them. And the only reason I'm sharing this with you guys is I think that the, the principles behind this could be applied to aquariums as well. Um, I've gathered together some PVC, some dry long fiber sphagnum, uh, and some sizzle twine. And you could use fishing line, you could use thread, you could really use whatever you want. I happen to have this enormous roll of sizzle from the greenhouse and from making the catio scratching posts, so I'm going to be using that. Um, you just want to make sure that you get long fiber sphagnum that is just that, nothing added to it. Um, so basically, I want to be able to put this into the pot where I'm going to have my plants and be able to pin them to it so it'll make like a little bushy mound of plant instead of just having them sort of flop over and um, my cats eat them. So I've, I am not buying anything for this. I'm just trying to make something from stuff I have left over, which is why I have two different sizes of PVC. But I think this will work out well anyhow, because I'm going to be potting the various vining plants into these little nursery pots and then placing them inside these bigger pots. Um, and I think that having the two lengths means it'll take up less space inside this little pot, but it'll still have the support from the soil and should work out just fine. Um, so I've just taken some twine and tied these two together. I have some sphagnum moss just hydrating in water so it's easier to work with. Then I'll lay it over this, wrap it with more twine, and we'll have a moss support bowl. Should be pretty easy. Now I've never done this and I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so we'll learn together. Again, just moisten this squeeze out the excess water and then I'll lay it over this and then I can use pins, I can use tape, I can use, um, I have like, I don't, I don't know what I did with them, but I have like garden twisty ties in order to attach the different vines to this so that they have something to climb onto. And I'm going to start with the front and then move to the back and you wrap it just over and over any place you see a loose spot, you go back over. Um, and this, you know, I think that this could be applied to aquariums because you could do something similar with sticks and moss if you're trying to go for like a vertical moss look in your aquarium. Um, and then you could anchor plants to it as well. You could anchor things like Anubias or Bucephalandras. And if that's something you guys would like to see me try in the future, let me know. You know, DIY projects are always fun. Using materials that you already have is always great because it saves you a lot of money. Um, these are scrap PVC left over from when I built the swamp cooler for my greenhouse. And, you know, I keep everything so that if I have a project like this, I can, you know, have materials to use and not have to go out and buy them. Plus, it always feels good to not throw things away. So now I'm just looking for gaps in the moss and wrapping more on. Now you could also use, they make, um, or they sell, I should say, like green versions of this moss. This has not been dyed or anything. This is just natural moss, which is my preference. Um, but again, whatever you like is what you should use. I prefer to avoid things that utilize dyes, um, you know, naturalist, kind of like, like things simple and easy. Again, just going around in any place I see any moss sticking out, I'm adding an extra loop of twine and then I'm plopping some on the top so that no PVC shows up there and just wrapping around.
And then when I get to where I think it's good, I'll simply tie it off. So you just tie it off, cut off any excess, and then you have a little moss support for climbing vine plants. Um, again, I'm going to be placing this in here, like so. I'll fill this up with potting soil and then plant my vines and then I'll show you how you can then attach them to this for them to have something to climb and make a more bushy appearance. Now both of my plants that I have to plant today are very small. Um, they've been in my propagation station which is a series of glass bottles um, in order to root. So we'll move them in here and using this moss helps maintain the humidity as well because it holds water super awesome. Um, I also use a lot of that this sphagnum with my orchids and my carnivorous plants for that reason. So here I have um, sort of a generic soil mix that I make for house plants. It's about half normal potting soil and then a quarter perlite and a quarter coconut choir. Uh, it's super easy to make. It's super cheap. I buy all this stuff in bulk and then just as needed I mix it up like this. Um, and I find that the plants do pretty well. It's a nice a soil that stays nice and hydrated, but also drains easily, which is important to prevent root rot. So I have this gorgeous pothos variety uh, that was given to me from my friend Christine when I went down to visit her fish room. And it's been in my propagation station rooting. And generally, you wait until the roots are about four inches long like these guys and then you can plant it. Um, so that's what's going to be going into our little pot here that we made. Um, now in reality I probably should have made this substantially taller but for the project I'm building I'm not quite sure how it'll work yet and this would be easy enough to redo. So I just I filled up my pot with my potting soil and moistened it and then I'm putting a hole in here and I'm just going to push the roots into the hole. Now I'll have to keep this really well hydrated for these first couple weeks until it really takes root and you can tell it's taken root. Um, number one, the leaves will look good and number two, if you give it a little tug, you'll feel that uh, it doesn't just pull out. Obviously you have to be pretty gentle. But the purpose of this moss thing is, is then we can attach it to it uh, and wind it around so it'll fill out and bush. Now this one I may actually end up trimming and rerooting this side because it's so long already. This is all grown while it was in the propagation station. So I'll just trim it right below a node and then drop it back in my propagation station to root and then I'll add it to this later. Now these are the essentially just twist ties that I'll use to attach it. You want to be pretty gentle um, but it's nice with this sizzle you can put the twist tie through the sizzle and then just gently tie on the plant. Again you could use something like little staples or clips or they make, um, uh, like it's almost like a masking tape that you can use to do this. I like these guys because they're nice and gentle and they hold together well and they're not very obtrusive and they're easy to trim. So here it is and as it, you know, sends out more vines and leaves, it'll mound around this uh, moss pole and I can pin it where I want it in order for it to, uh, instead of it draping over everything, it will just attach to this dude and it'll give it some support and also hopefully help it be, from being quite so attractive to my cats. For some reason they really love these trailing vines. Um, but yeah, this, this is a particularly beautiful plant and I'm really excited to see what happens with it. Um, I have another one as well that we're going to do here shortly. Um, but again, I have a big project geared around all my various crazy plants, so make sure you subscribe with that notification bell on if you want to see updates on these, as well as all the other things I've been showing you lately. As always, thanks for your continued support.